was sitting here thinking. And another problem I had with the church, okay? A lot of people won't let you live down who you used to be. Yeah. I did a video the other day. And that's a happy pillow. I did a video the other day, and the video was about church hurt. And I told y'all some stories about what happened to me with these people in this church. They don't let you let on your past. I had a young lady. Now, I don't know if I told y'all on that last video, but I worked in a church like five years, okay? So, in, in the church, I've seen so much. I mean, so much. So, I'm sitting in church one day, and um, I had a question asked to me on that last video. The video um, got probably over half a million views so far. But... I, I was asked a question in one of the comments. Well, it got to be more to the story. That's what they said. They said it had to be more to the story. And it is more to the story. It's always more to the story. Because I told you, I wasn't always a good person. I wasn't always saved. I wasn't always born again. Okay? So, I'm in church and this lady comes in, in my office. Now, this lady... She and I happened to be on a women's committee. We were doing a women's conference in the committee that was put together. She and I was on a committee together, which I felt was fine. But um, I had to mess with her husband like 30 years earlier. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I had to mess with her husband. So she came to my office one day and she said, Nora, can I ask you something? And I said, yeah, and I kept... Type it on my computer, but I know this about to be something because for her to come in my office and ask me, can she ask me something? I knew it wasn't going to be good, but I didn't know what she was about to ask me. So she was like, as I'm typing, she right there. She was like, well, can you turn around? Can you stop typing for a second so I can? Now I'm at work now. Okay, I work in the church, but I'm at work. She came in my office. See, that's another problem. She came in my office to ask me because she talked to me. But I'm okay. I'm cool with it. I'm going to let her talk to me. So I politely turn around and let her start talking. She said, Nora, can I ask you something? I said, yeah. She said, did you ask my husband? For a split second, y'all. I said, girl, you know damn well I messed with you. But I didn't say that because, for one, we in a church. But for two... We on a women's conference together. I'm a changed person. That was 30 years ago. Don't answer like you have not grown. So I said, yeah, I did. I talked to your husband. And she was like, I'm so glad you told me because I didn't want you to lie. And I wasn't going to lie. I don't know if she had a brain freeze or something, but she and I had interactions. Was that a fly? She and I had interactions. So this one, it, it was like I couldn't lie because you already knew. Because I used to do, you know, the, the phone and hang up and all that. That, cause That's how long ago it was. See, some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. I, then a the tape player that, okay, this ain't no back in history lesson. But anyway, so she was like, she started crying because she was like, I didn't know you were going to tell me the truth. And I'm so glad. You know, so we can move forward, this, that, and the other. Her and that man weren't together no more. Okay? Her and her husband had split up. When they split up, she told him the truth that, she, that he raised a son with his last name for 30 years and it wasn't his child and she knew it. 30 years, she raised this child. He raised that child. Don't get me wrong. He was not a good husband. He was a cheater. He used to beat her everything. But for whatever reason, when they got a divorce, she let him know that that oldest child of hers was not his. So she's sitting in my office and she's crying. And I'm like, I don't really know what to do. I don't, I'm not a hugger. Like, I'm not a hugger. But I'm like, well, I'm sorry, you know. But, you know, it was a long time ago. You know, I'm trying to make her feel good because you in my office, first and foremost, but we at church. So, 
We did our little kumbaya. She was okay. Now, the whole while I'm thinking, well, you ain't even with that man no more. What you crying for? But I ain't say that, though. I ain't say that. And then I'm thinking to myself, well, you messed with my cousin and he married. She didn't think I knew that. I didn't see them taking the trips over to the um watch Serena and them play tennis and all this. He was still married. You y'all fly over to Africa together and do stuff together like y'all was on a mission trip. I knew what y'all was doing, but I didn't say that. Because who am I to judge? But you sat your behind in my office, talked about your ex-husband who you had a child on, who he didn't know it was his child for 30 years. And now, since you divorced, you messed with that other lady husband. Make it make sense. But I'm not here to judge, and I didn't care. So I'm like, okay. So she got up, she left, but we had to kumbaya. So I'm good now. So I'm go back to work. I go back to work on my stuff, you know. And I'm good. Because me and her good. We on a women's committee together. We about to do a women's conference after the rain. So it was very fitting for the conference after the rain. So anyhow, time went on after the, after the rain, you know, after the conference. It was a quarterly meeting. And I used to do the minutes. I had to be at all the meetings. So I was at a quarterly meeting. And I was, you know, getting ready to, I wasn't typing yet, but I was getting ready to do everything I needed to do. And I had my stuff set up, but the pastor hadn't came out yet. So a little old lady came up to me. Me and a little old lady was real cool. We had like a um, church relationship. She was real good. She was good. She, you know, one of them, one of them she didn't pray for me or nothing. Well, she, if she did, I didn't know it. But anyway, so she walks over to me. And I'm happy inside because I know this little old lady, she always got some good news. She's a good news old lady. I didn't know she was a nosy old lady, y'all. So she walks over to me at the desk and um, she says, Nora, can I ask you something? So I was like, yeah, go ahead, ask me. So she was like, did you mess with sister so-and-so husband? Well, now I'll tell y'all, I was livid. So I said, hold on for a second. I said, come here. So I got up. Took her to the other side of the room, right? And I say, Sister Nosy. Ain't nobody else hearing us now. It's just me and her talking, okay? So I said, Sister Nosy, if you ever ask me anything like this again, I'm going to be disrespectful. And I've learned to respect my elders. I said, the only reason you asking me this is because me and you cool. I said, but you go back and tell whoever told you that, that was 30 years ago. And something like, don't try me again. Something, something to that degree. So she moseyed on and off. We don't went on about her business, okay? That's cool. I'm pissed. When I tell y'all I'm pissed, because I'm literally about to be in front of the whole church at a church conference. You hear me? <laughs> Pissed I was. I'm cool though. Pastor came, sat down. They started talking. <sighs> y'all remind me to tell y'all about this one girl who used to always say I did wrong on the minutes. How I always messed up the minutes. For some reason, she felt like I always messed up the minutes. Actually, what I'm going to do is change my hat, change my shirt, and I'm going to come back and tell the story again. Anyway, so church conference went on. I'm pissed, but I got through the conference. Shortly after, probably a couple of days, probably a couple of days after, my pastor comes out of his office and um, he started telling me about the rumors that he heard me messing with that lady husband. Mm -hmm. Now, I ain't petty as I used to be, but as he's telling me about me messing with this lady husband, he ain't telling me in a loving way. He trying to um, side, like reprimand, um, low blow. It, it wasn't loving. It, it wasn't a good way of him, him telling me. He was actually keeping up with, with the nonsense they had going on out there in them, <laughs> in them pulpit streets, right? So anyway, so as he was telling me and, and saying, you know, feeling his type of way, I'm listening. 
I'm listening, but he, y'all know he's the pastor, so I ain't gonna show out too much now. You, <laughs> he's my boss too. But um, so I'm gonna get him up off me. I'm going to get him up off me. I say, well, you know that same lady. You know I messed with her husband 30 years ago, Pastor. I messed with that lady's husband 30 years ago, Pastor. He said, well, well um, why? how could you mess with somebody's husband? That's what he asked me. How could you mess with somebody's husband? I said, I wasn't saved back then. He said, well, morally. So is it just me? Y'all tell me, is it just me? Because this is the question I asked him. I said, what are morals when you don't know God? Like, who's to tell me what's morally right if I didn't know God? Who morals are we going by? Huh? So don't tell me, and this is what I'm saying to him. Don't tell me about morals when I don't know God. I think God's rules trump everything. So don't tell me about morals when I don't know God. And I'm literally telling him this. I didn't know God. So anything goes when you don't know God. Don't tell me about morals. Don't do that. Petty I am. So I said, well, the same lady who I messed with her husband 30 years ago, Pastor, 30 years ago. Did she tell you that she had that oldest boy she got that ain't his son? She let that man raise that baby past all them years, and that ain't even his son. That's what I said. I told my pastor that because you told him about me. So let me, yeah, I'm, I'm petty like that. Let me, let me tell him about you, pastor. She raised that boy for 30 years ago. That, I mean, for 30 years and told her husband that was her son, his son, and it wasn't his son. He even got his last name, pastor. I didn't stop there. I kept going. I said, and did she tell you that she messed with my cousin? And my cousin married, and I know they messing around, and they went to the tennis game the other day, and then they talking about they went on a mission trip to Africa. She he cheating on his wife, Pastor, with her. She didn't tell you that, though, did she? But she told you about me, something happened 30 years ago? Uh-uh, please don't come tell me about her no more. So that's what I'm saying. The people in the church, when they don't let you live down your past, then somebody said, well, why you ain't take why you ain't take some of that stuff to your pastor? Because this I couldn't take nothing to my pastor. Simple as that. Simple as that. Because people see me to always be who I used to be. And I'm sorry that I'm not the one to lie about my past. I don't have to lie about my past because it's somebody that wanna know that you know what? I could be I I used to be screwed up. But I can get it together and I can be born again and I can do different stuff. I can live different. I can live holy. But see, some of y'all out there so busy forgetting what y'all did, you know what I mean? Throwing rocks high in your hands. That ain't me. It would never be me. And I don't need to go into the church house to praise God. And it just kills me as I'm reading through the messages. Y'all saying all this stuff like um, the church is a hospital. Who want to go to the hospital? Who want to go to the hospital? Raise your hand if you just want to always be in the hospital. Every week you plan on going back to the hospital. Every week I'm going to go subject myself to the hospital. I'm going to keep myself around sick people every week. Ain't nowhere in the Bible that they say that church is like a hospital. And y'all that came up with this, the church like a hospital. It is not. It was a reverend up there in D.C. the other day saying, quit saying the church is like a hospital. The church is like, it should be like a gym where you build your faith. Every day you go and you work out and you build your faith. And that's some place you want to be. You know, once you leave out the gym and you don't be working out no more, then all of a sudden you get some problems. You know what I mean? Your, your faith get weak. If you ain't connected to the source. I'm connected to the source. So believe you me. I don't have to be in nobody's church house every day to praise God, to love God, to have a Holy Ghost experience. It ain't just, I, I found God right here in this house, right here in this room that I'm in right now. And I here come to, again and talk to me again right here. So this ain't to tell y'all not to go to church. This is for you church-going people who always want to be so judgmental. Think about how many people you pushing away from the church. The church ain't no hospital. 
Then I read the comments too when the people talk about, oh, the people at your job hurt you and you don't quit your job. The people at the club hurt you and you don't stop going to the club. When you get to the point in life where you make your job like church or make your club life like church, what's the point in going to church if they all the same? Of course I'm not quitting my job because them idiots want to be idiots. But when, them, when they do what they do at my job, I want to go to the church house, fall on my knees at the altar and pray and tell God about the week I had. Without the people that still sitting in the pulpit throwing darts at my back while I'm sitting in my chair, sitting on my knees at the altar. I'm sitting on my knees at the altar and I got people throwing <laughs> darts at me, y'all, because of who I used to be. Yeah, because of who I used to be. You can't even pray no more. Because I ain't all y'all want to do is talk about something I did 30 years ago. And this ain't just one church. Somebody going through this every day. This is what people go through every day in the church. And y'all want them to keep going to that church. Y'all want people to keep going to the church. If you're smart, you're going to quit subjecting yourself to pain like that. You think I'm going to keep going somewhere where people talk about me? Where people laughing at me? Where people don't want to help me for real? You want to cry holy, holy, and then you can't even um, shake your hands with your neighbor? You don't even want to be right. You want to rumor. You want to tell people what they used to do? Why? So no. No. I'm not going back to church yet. I'm not. Not yet. I'm going to pray about it because my heart is still hurt. See, y'all don't understand what y'all do to people. Y'all, ain't no such thing as church hurt. Yes, it is. It's when all y'all people get together. The little cliques in the church. When all y'all get together and start rumors. So all y'all get together and go to talking to somebody. And you ain't consult with God first. And then you let somebody leave out that church feeling worthless. Worse than they were when they came in. Because something you said out of your mouth. When they came as babies looking for God. Because all they wanted to do was to have a spiritual growth. But you got somebody knocking them down when they come in. I wish I would. Man, I'm going back to church, but I got to find one. I got to find one. And I got a whole lot of more stories. Because I'm going to keep telling them. Because maybe, just maybe, you will find yourself being one of these people that did what one of them people did. I worked in that church for five years. I don't have one story. It ain't one time I got hurt. I got hurt time after time after time after time. And I kept going back like an idiot. Just allowing myself to get beat up. Ain't no way in the hell I'd have let somebody in the club keep swinging on me. Ain't no way in the hell I'd have let somebody at my job keep swinging on me. But I'm in the church every day letting them swing on me, swing on me, swing on me. And I keep taking I keep praying, I keep talking to God. God say move. Get up out of here. And that's what I did. I'm out.